for the Dolphins, I feel like their scoreboard doesn't really display how dominant I feel like they were. Tua seems to be Bill Belichick's daddy, 5-0. and Best, the first quarterback to win five straight games against Bill Belichick in his history. A guy who's approaching Don Shula's record. That's pretty impressive, I'd say. Dolphins, need I say more? Speed everywhere. Their defense, I think, stepped up pretty well. Vic Vangio, interested to see how this defense steps up. Bradley Chubb was everywhere that night. So credit to them. Patriots, this is why you get receivers because you don't have any talent on this on the receiver core. I don't trust Kendrick Bourne. I don't trust Kayshawn Booty. Like, and then you got Devontae Parker involved. That's awesome. What did that do for you? 17 points, and then you got a touchdown on special teams. I'm just... That's my so, my gripe. Yeah, my biggest gripe with the Patriots, and we're going to keep doing this every single week until they get receivers or make a trade. But the thing that summarized the game the most is Eli Apple was eating your receivers lunch in this game. Again, I don't want to be mean to Eli Apple because I think he's a fine football player, but Eli Apple was eating your receivers lunch in this football game. We can't go out there and then have Devontae Parker, who is a Dolphins reject, where they're like, oh, you know what? We'd rather have River Kirkcraft on our team than Devontae Parker. And then you can't have your solution be Mike Gusecki signing Ezekiel Elliott. Why? Who told the Patriots that they could roll this offense out there and think it'd be fine? Like, no, Juju Smith-Schuster can't be your number one receiver, even though New England's media wrote an article saying that the Patriots consider him to be the fifth best receiver on this team. That's a problem. And if people know all you can do is run the football, it's like this isn't even a Mac Jones problem where I think Mac Jones isn't going to be the best quarterback in the world, but I think he can be a fine professional quarterback like somewhere to the level of a Ryan Tannehill, maybe even better than that. I don't think he'll ever be someone like a dog like Brock or any of these guys who stand in the pocket. However, you can't also give him nothing on offense and Bill O'Brien can only coach so much. And the fact that you thought it was okay last year to have Matt Patricia be the offensive coordinator, like what is Josh McDaniels going to get fired? And they're like, oh, we have Bill O'Brien, but you can be our defensive coordinator. Like how... How are you the team that won six Super Bowls, but this is how you run your team? You think this is the 1980s where you don't need to score points at all to win the game, where it's like with the Patriots, as soon as someone scores more than 20 points, they've lost. And it's like you can't expect and rely on your defense to score every single game and turn the ball over because you go up against some pretty good quarterbacks that aren't going to have some turnovers in this game. And you're not going to be able to just rely on having a really good special teams. That's great. But if you can't score, you know what the biggest killer to an elite defense is? A bad offense. That's contagious in your locker room. And then Mac Jones is just sitting on the sidelines like, what? why can't I have at least a Jalen Waddle? Why can't I have someone like Tyreek Hill? Like, that looks really nice. That looks really fun. Why can't I actually go out there and have fun? And then we were watching that game. I was like, the Patriots feel like Gotham City. Everything is dark. It's just like foggy all the time. Bill Belichick is there just brooding like someone like, not the Joker, like Lex Luthor. He's kind of just brooding there in his cutoff hoodie. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Who thought this was okay? It's the most painful offense to watch. And yeah, you're going to be in a lot of games because your defense is going to hold teams down. But if you can't score more than 20 points, you're not going to win a lot of games. So it's like, this is a thing where people want to rip Mac Jones. And I'm someone who's been like, Mac Jones is bad, but it's like Mac Jones needs weapons. Every single quarterback that's thriving right now has weapons. And then you go to the other side, Tua has Tyreek Hill and the Patriots were able to hold Tyreek Hill down because you drafted Christian Gonzalez. Really good draft pick there. So yeah, your defense is really good. And then you have Jalen Waddle in this game ends up going out, but he's another dynamic element. And the Dolphins were also able to run the ball better in this game than they have in the past few weeks, but just felt like the Dolphins were in control. They knew they just didn't just don't turn the ball over. And that's the way you're going to beat the Patriots to a had a pick stuff happens. I get, you're going to have an interception versus new England. It's a tough environment on the road, but two is just kind of like, okay, it felt like the dolphins were like, we're going to win this game. It's going to be ugly as long as we get out with the W and that's what happened. You go up against a tough coach, Bill Belichick defense, who pretty much took Tyreek Hill out of the game for the most part. Christian Gonzalez was manning him up one-on-one -on -one and having some success. It, just doesn't matter if you can't score points. What is this? Like, I don't get it. Who th who thinks this is okay? The who most thinks it's okay? The most frustrating thing about this for me is the fact that this has been the same problem 
for five years, ever since Brady, actually, no, before Brady left. Because yeah. you remember the 2018 receiver court. I know they won the Super Bowl, but it wasn't the most special receiver court. You're talking about an old Gronk, an old Edelman, and then the guys around him. God bless Danny Amendola. We like Danny Amendola. But like we're talking about guys who elsewhere, they left, like a Philip Dorsett, for example, yeah. left the Patriots, joined the Seahawks, and was their fifth receiver. What yeah. does that tell you about your team? And then Chris as, Hogan. Yeah, Chris Hogan. He left. He went to, I think, the Giants. Did nothing there. It's like that's where your team's at right now. And you don't have somebody who can elevate your talent like a Tom Brady. You can't really expect that from yeah. really anybody outside of maybe two or three players in this league. And it's been the problem really for the last five years. Five years this has been your problem. You haven't addressed it. You had the Cam Newton experiment. God bless Cam Newton. He wasn't the same guy. And plus the receiver core around him. Terrible. Then you have Mac Jones for the first year. No talent at wide receiver. What do you do to address it? Nothing. You go out and you get him a defensive coordinator as his offensive coordinator like that did it. And obviously he didn't perform well because of it. Yeah. Now this year, you again, you went out and got Juju, who is a solid two, I would say. You prefer him as your three, but he's a solid two if you need him to be. And that's all you did. You get Mike Kosicki. You already had a decent tight end, Hunter Henry. You have two tight ends. That's awesome. But you don't have like a A.J. Brown. You don't have a, you know... Truly elite wide receiver, Stefan Diggs, like a number one that every guy needs. And then again this year, this is the same problem for the last five years. And it's just, it feels like they're just banging their head against the wall, trying to be the old Patriots. But instead, they just look silly at yeah. the end of the day. Their most exciting player that they've had the last five years, they cut Malik Cunningham. They said, yes, this guy is super athletic and exciting. Let's put him on the practice squad. Like, it just doesn't feel like they have a pulse on the NFL. It doesn't seem like they have a pulse on their offense. It doesn't seem like they have a pulse on reality at this point.